I'm going to talk a little bit here about uh, string aperture or sense area aperture and pickups. Um, the conventional wisdom is that a narrower aperture is a yeah, tighter, brighter, more shimmery sound, and a wider aperture is um, warmer and fatter. As with many uh, commonly long held beliefs in the pickup world, uh, that is both simultaneously true and false. And uh, I'll demonstrate why here. I had a coil that uh, I adjusted the sense aperture in several different dimensions from a um, single coil aperture to a mini humbucker to a standard humbucker to a wide aperture humbucker uh, to a triple humbucker and then an impossibly wide aperture just as an example to show you what would happen if you push things out further than it was possible to fit in a pickup slot of any kind. Um, then I did one example with a evenly distributed magnetic field underneath and just the coil itself with no core to show the effects of the various phase cancellations and of a evenly distributed field along the aperture. Let's start right here. Um, this is a single coil aperture. I showed right here uh, aperture zero, but it's actually the aperture is the slightly wider than the width of the pole piece. Um, so it will be about a quarter of an inch or so. Usually when we're referring to fat, we're talking about the mid-range frequencies right around here. When we're talking about cancellation because of the aperture, we're talking about uh, comb filtering, where we have regularly spaced nulls in the frequency. And the aperture just shifts them around. Uh, there's nothing inherently um, bright or warm about the nulls in particular, um, but where they take place is um, subjectively, in terms of psychoacoustics, what we're going to hear. And as I'll show as we continue on, that's going to vary drastically as we change the, the aperture shape. Um, sometimes making it wider will make it warmer, sometimes making it wider will make it brighter. So looking at just the standard single coil and humbucker, we can see the response here. There's a large thrust in the upper mid-range, and then we have these peaks here in up in the highs. Our pick attack lies around this area, so this is going to be very important. And then our sparkling shimmering highs are right around here. Now let's scroll through and see what happens when we morph into a humbucker shape. This is a mini humbucker right here. So you can see that this right here dips a little more, this right here dips a little more, this right here dips a little more. So they more or less match up because we're not talking about too big a difference. So like I said, we were talking about a pull piece of 0.1875. We're moving to uh, 0.4375 here. So that's, uh, that's a small difference. It is noticeable though. Moving up, we have a little bit higher peak in the mid range. We have a little bit of a cut here in the upper mids. We have shifted this peak here down a little bit. So that's gonna be less bright. And then right around our pick attack area, we have these deep cuts. This one especially right here, and this one to a lesser extent, is going to make things sound a little bit warmer. So we see that the time-held belief here holds true. The upper frequencies right here, we can also see have been cut down because of the null that's up here, and then the natural slope of the, the decay of the high frequencies. Now, moving further on, we're going to go to a standard humbucker. Now we can see that the effect is enhanced and shifted a little bit. The mid-range frequencies around 800 to 1K and a little bit above are enhanced even more than they were with the single coil. We have a wider Q cut here in the upper mid slash lower highs. And then all, all of our frequencies are muted a little bit more because we get this sharp slope here. So moving from a single coil to a mini humbucker to a standard humbucker, we can easily see how this uh, belief came about. Just because the null that naturally occurs is right here in our very important frequencies. And it happens to reverse this peak right here, which we saw was present in both the single coil and the mini humbucker. So when we get to the standard humbucker, that is a significant drop there in our treble frequencies. And then we also have a null occurring right here where this peak was, and a little bit further up, and then here. And then we are returning to nearly the same up in the upper treble frequencies. 
for the most part, we have held true to the standard belief here. Let's push it out a little bit wider. So here's our standard humbucker. Now we're going to push that out a little bit wider. We don't usually see humbuckers this wide. There are some that exist, some, some vintage humbuckers that had narrower coils pushed out wider. Um, there are also mini quad coil humbuckers where you can activate the outer poles and uh, that's what we're going to see. Now toggling back and forth between them from humbucker to extra wide humbucker, you can see we're losing some of this mid-range. So we are slightly less fat in this area. And then our high frequencies, we filled in some of this gap here. And then this null doesn't exist anymore. This null has now become a little peak. So all of that warmth roll off we're getting back. So this pickup with a wider aperture than the standard humbucking pickup is actually going to sound significantly brighter than the humbucker pickup with a wider aperture. So we can see this is where the traditionally held belief tends to fall apart. Now let's push it out even wider than that. So if we push this out super wide, we get into territory where it will be impossible for us to fit in a standard humbucking package, but this might be analogous to um, like one of those wacky triple humbuckers made up of you know, three coils. And we can see here that as we push that aperture out wider and the sense area is wider, we have all but lost our big mid-range thrust here. Uh, we've shifted that forward and then our upper mid-range and our treble frequencies here, we have a much larger peak, especially compared to our humbucker. We've gone up significantly, filled in this lull a little bit more, and this peak right here is even higher. And even though we have lost a little bit up around the pick attack, we do have this treble peak up higher where we get our more shrill and glassy frequencies going even wider than the wide pickup into triple coil territory is going to sound significantly brighter than even our wider aperture, further disproving the time-honored belief. Let's push that a little bit further into impossibly wide territory. So uh, this might be close to switching the inner coil of a bridge pickup and a middle pickup, combining them, something like that extremely wide but we see we get our mid-range peak back and then we get a little bit more bite in the upper frequencies here but we've cut this important pick attack frequencies here and we get this little null up above uh, 3k back that we used to have with our standard humbucker and that's where we got a lot of our warmth before we've cut up here by four a little bit and we have more glassy frequencies now, since we have this trade-off, we're going to have a warmer sounding pickup with a little bit of high-end glassiness. So we're starting to get back the other way. So we have additional warmth. Uh, we will get that mid-range thrust back. So we're going to get a fatter sounding pickup, but we're going to have some glassiness and a little bit of present cut, which is going to sound different than we did. But again, you see that the trend is now reversing back toward the time-held belief as we push it even further out and we are getting back toward traditional humbucking territory. So that just shows you can see where the where the belief started out. It makes sense within the parameters of a standard humbucking pickup route, especially for going from a single coil to a humbucker or a mini humbucker to a standard humbucker. That trend holds true for those three apertures of pickups. But it's not necessarily true, because if we get to a wide range pickup, a wide aperture pickup, the trend reverses itself. And that is possible to occur in a guitar, and you could very easily wind one of those for yourselves. And then we get into impossibly wide territory, the absolute opposite happens, where we get a brighter pickup for a wider aperture, and that trend continues and then reverses again. Now I'm going to show what happens when we have an even sense area. This relates to the sound of the coil itself versus the sound of the coil with poles. Uh, since we have an even sense area, we have many more points along the coil that we're sensing. So we're going to have a lot more strange frequency cancellations. Um, so we can see here, we've canceled out a lot of our mid-range, and then we have a rather odd profile up in the upper mids and the, the high frequencies. We do have this 
this uh, trending slope down here, but our high high frequencies are, are, are not canceled out so much. We have a whole lot of super glassy highs. So let's compare that to our single coil. And you can see between the two, we have more high frequency content in the super duper wide coil, but we've lost a lot of our mid range. This is going to sound less fat than a, a single coil, which does not uh, appear to make sense. We have a much bigger, fatter pickup. You would expect a beefier sound, but it's not. It's going to sound a lot thinner and less present. Now let's compare it to our standard humbucker. And you can see here, we still have the, the mid range cut and we also have basically the reverse trend. So if we were to take our wide humbucker and pull the, the poles out and then just use uh, extra strong magnets to, to generate the flux around the entire coil evenly, um, we would get basically reverse trend of our standard humbucker. And now just for kicks and giggles, we're going to compare a regular single coil pickup to a humbucking pickup. This is a one pole sense area versus a standard or slightly more than one inch uh, aperture for a standard humbucking pickup. And you can see the mid range frequencies are generally the same. And we come into differences here in the upper mids and lower highs where our peak here is much lower than it is in a single coil. We haven't shifted it very much, but we do have this presence cut here. And then we get into our pick attack and high frequencies and this is what gives the standard humbucker its characteristic sound over the single coil, which has a peak in virtually the same area we have a cut in the humbucker. And then we continue to have cuts up in the upper frequencies until we get up here, where they, uh, they tend to trend back toward a higher amplitude, uh, but still not as much as the single coil. So now let's watch the metamorphosis of our frequency response as we scroll through the various apertures starting with single coil. Thanks for checking out the video. Hopefully that clears up some issues. In summary, compared to the sense area of a standard single coil versus a standard PAF sized humbucker, the trend does hold that a wider aperture makes for a warmer sound. However, if you push it out further to a wider aperture humbucker, the trend tends to reverse itself and you get some interesting cancellations in the upper mid range. As we push it out further beyond that, we start to reverse the trend further, we get holes in different areas of the mid-range, and we get a brighter, thinner pickup. And if you push it out extremely wide, to the equivalent of maybe two coils on a Strat, then we are getting into a territory where uh, there is quite a bit of cancellation between the two, and you actually get a, an extremely thin-sounding pickup.